Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining our Miami Valley Community Prayer Gathering here in Dayton, Ohio, the hub of the Miami Valley region of Southwest Ohio. This prayer gathering is in conjunction with the 2020 National Day of Prayer. I'm Bill Nance from faithandfriendsradio.com, honored to be a part of this very special event once again this year. The National Day of Prayer is the first Thursday of May every year. It was in 1988 that President Reagan signed a bill establishing officially this date for the National Day of Prayer. In American history, a need and call for national prayer goes back as far as 1775 when a day of national prayer and fasting was called for by the Continental Congress. In 1863, during the Civil War, President Lincoln declared a National Prayer and Fasting Day. Earlier in 1849, President Zachary Taylor proclaimed a National Day of Fasting, Humiliation, and Prayer in America during a worldwide epidemic of cholera. It was believed 150,000 Americans died from cholera from 1832 to 1849. In 1849, in Ohio, the first planned state fair was postponed. National days of prayer were historically called for when specific needs dictated them. Then in 1952, President Truman signed into law a joint resolution from Congress that established an annual day recognized for national prayer. It is worthy to note that Dayton resident Ms. Levina Wilson an inner-city missionary was a member of President Truman's committee that inaugurated having an annual National Day of Prayer. For the past nine years, this Miami Valley Community Prayer Gathering has been held on the historical Montgomery County Courthouse Square. Of course, this year, because of the restrictions on public gatherings, we're not physically on the grounds of the courthouse. Our 2020 prayer gathering is being graciously recorded in the facilities of the Living Word Church in the Vandalia area of Dayton. Our first broadcast of this will be at noon, 2020, National Day of Prayer, as you're streaming it right now, also on faithandfriendsradio.com during this hour. In doing so, we spiritually join thousands of other Christians on the 2020 National Day of Prayer across the nation to honor our country and to pray for her well-being. And to open our gathering, Ms. Daria Dillard Stone will lead us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. After the Pledge of Allegiance, she will sing the National Anthem, and then following the National Anthem, Pastor Scott Davidson, on behalf of the Miami Valley City Gates Ministry, will pray an invocation. So join us now in the pledge to officially start the prayer gathering. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous night all the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof to the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the The home of 
the brave, oh, the home of the brave. Greetings to you all. This is a special day that we have to um, exercise our privilege here in America to pray publicly. It is a joy and an honor. I'd like to begin by praying to the Lord and offering our thanksgiving for him and for this privilege. Would you please join me? Father, we bow our heads before you reverently. We acknowledge your manifest presence, your omnipresence, your presence within us. And we thank you that you have chosen us to be ambassadors for your holy kingdom and for our, our beloved Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We invoke your name over this time, Lord God, and all power and authority is held in your hands. And we thank you for the, the opportunity to unite before you and to humble ourselves and bring our needs before you as one body, with one voice, with one mind. We offer this prayer to God our Father with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name. For those of you that have your Bibles that are watching or that are here, I'd like to encourage you to turn your Bibles with me to Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It's my honor and privilege to pray the prayer of repentance today. As it's written, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. As I'm sure most of you are wondering why our world is in such turmoil and fear, we, we have some things that are sure. And God teaches us how to have our prayers heard. He teaches the church to pray in Jesus' name. He teaches us that we must humble ourselves. So I'm going to pray 2 Chronicles 7, 14. I pray that you would also join me. If my people who are called by, now, by, by my name will humble themselves, Father, we pray and confess our sins of self-righteousness, arrogance and pride, and self-dependency, we pray and acknowledge this as an egregious sin before you. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would forgive this sin. We humble ourselves in your, in your presence here today, and we pray for mercy. Mercy, O oh God. We pray for, for your, your shed blood to cover this egregious sin before your throne. We ask this with reverence in Jesus' name. Amen. And it says later on in this verse, and pray and seek my face. Lord, you, you told Mary and Martha there was only one thing that was needed, and that is to seek you. So collectively, across this land, we join our hearts in prayer, and we, we come before you humble, and we look up to you as, as our exclusive source for all things. Lord, we want to clear our minds of our thoughts, we, we confess that we, are, we have chosen our own way, that we're, we're managing life with the wisdom of men and having our hearts set on the things of men. We confess this as sin. We know that this is surely against your will, for you have commanded us to be dependent upon you. Now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, please forgive this sin. And we pray that you would help us, in Jesus' name, with the help of the Holy Spirit, to place our hearts and mind in complete dependency upon you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. And Lord, you said if, if, the, if the body of Christ will turn from their wicked way, oh Lord, forgive us, Father. Forgive us for not protecting the unborn. Forgive us for not loving each other. Forgive us for counting, uh, looking at holiness with a skewed view. Oh Lord, we pray that you would give us a heart of compassion and that you would take our arrogance away from us. And we confess these things 
as sin before your throne. And we pray, God, that you would forgive us for not intentionally making disciples out of every believer. Oh God, we pray that you would please forgive the sins and that you would put the spirit of discipleship and prayer and fasting back in our lives. Oh God, we submit this to you and we pray for forgiveness of these sins and we pray for an empowerment from the Holy Spirit from within to be obedient without question. We offer this prayer to God our Father in Jesus' name. And now, Lord, you promised that you would forgive and that you would uh, forgive our sins and that you would heal this land. We do pray for our, our land, our great nation. God, we pray that you would release, Lord, your spirit upon this nation and that you would cause conviction of sin to come down on every breathing human and that the Holy Spirit would do a work that is unparalleled that conviction of sin, that godly sorrow, and a true repentance would be wrought out of this tragic nightmare, but that the body of Christ would lead the way, and that we would start with us, cleanse us now, Lord, and forgive us of our, of our manifold sins, and please, Holy Spirit, convict America of her sins. And now, Lord, we pray that this would lead un unto a revival in the land, and, and to a mass spiritual rebirth across this nation and that we would come out of this pit alive by the Spirit. We offer this prayer to God our Father in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Stone and Pastor Davidson. Well, as Dayton is the gathering point of several major streams of water in this region, we wanted to bring pastors from around the Miami Valley together for prayer on the National Day of Prayer. While we are not physically at the Courthouse Square, these prayers and our commemoration of the National Day of Prayer will be through the use of internet and social media. Thank God we have this way to reach beyond Courthouse Square at 3rd and Main. So this year we can be seen and heard everywhere, the state, the community, even further. As was mentioned earlier, the National Day of Prayer was established by Congress. Each year, proclamations from the president on down to the local level have been issued to recognize this important day. This year, we received a proclamation from the Montgomery County Commissioners and a video welcome from Mayor Nan Whaley of the city of Dayton. Hi, this is Dayton Mayor Nan Whaley, and I'm very excited to do something I've never done before, which is sign a proclamation while uh, being taped for a great event that's being done virtually. So, a proclamation from the office of the mayor of the city of Dayton. Whereas throughout history, people have been protected, comforted, strengthened, and guided by prayer. And whereas Ohioans in particular, those in the Dayton region, have used their God-given and inspired gifts and talents for the good benefit of the region and all in mankind. And whereas it seems timely and right that the people of the Dayton region should join with fellow citizens to pray to God on the 2020 National Day of Prayer for His protection, justice, and provision to our nation. And whereas we should specifically pray for the well-being of individuals and families, for the unity of our churches, for the protection of our citizens, and for the wisdom and guidance of our civic leaders. Now therefore I, Nan Whaley, Mayor of the City of Dayton, do hereby proclaim May 7, 2020 as Dayton Day of Prayer in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, and no day, no time uh, than this year do we need everyone to play, pray on National Day of Prayer as you all are doing this virtually. And we look forward to next year when you will be back at Courthouse Square. So I'm happy to sign this proclamation today. And please enjoy your event. We thank both the city and the county for proclaiming May 7, 2020 as the National Day of Prayer in Dayton and Montgomery County. Our prime objective on the National Day of Prayer is to pray for our nation and people in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. The biblical theme established by the National Day of Prayer Task Force for this year is Habakkuk 2.14, which reads, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. It's interesting that the national theme has its focus, the earth, and was selected late last year before COVID-19 virus was recognized as a pandemic. Definitely, there is a worldwide need for prayer at this moment. 
We know our God loves the whole of humanity and is all present throughout the earth. But today, our prayers will be by Miami Valley area pastors praising God for his provision and mercy and for requesting his continued grace and hearing of our petitions. Our program's organization is to focus our prayers individually on seven broad but influential sectors or mountains of society. We've selected scriptures to be read from the Bible, scriptures related to each of the mountains of influence. Let's start our time of scripture reading and prayers now. The first institution God established, as you would find in Genesis, was the family. In his wisdom, God established the family as the foundation of life and society. Then, as also recorded in Genesis, he established the institution of the church and thirdly, the government. Our foundational first sector or mountain of society is the family. During the current COVID-19 conditions, families have been a strength but have also been challenged as never before. Pastor Karen Haupt will present our scripture and to pray for families. Deuteronomy 4.8.9 Or what great nation has statutes and judgments so righteous, so upright and just, as the whole law which I am placing before you today? Only pay attention and watch yourselves closely, so that you do not forget the things which your eyes have seen, and they do not depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your grandchildren, impressing these things on their mind and penetrating their heart with these truths. Now from the Psalms 78, verse 1 and 4, Listen, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth and be willing to learn. We will not hide them from our children, but we will tell to the generation to come the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord and tell of his great might and power and the wonderful works that he has done. And in Malachi, we hear these words, He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, a reconciliation produced by repentance, so that I will not come and strike the land with the curse of complete destruction. And finally, from the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 6, 18, I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters says the Lord Almighty. Let's pray. Father, in this time of prayer, we have to stop and just say how much we love you. Surely it's not enough, but you receive our love and you know our hearts, our weaknesses, and our strengths. You make us strong. You ask God in Deuteronomy 4, 8, what nation has statutes so upright and just as the law you set before us? You lovingly told us to Listen, to take heed and hear, to guard our lives diligently, lest we forget and your word depart from our mind and heart. You commanded us to teach your word to our children and to our children's children. Oh Lord, you love your family. You desire and you will have a family of love. We have not remembered your word. We followed other gods that are not gods. We have not taught our children the truth but we have fed them with entertainment, movies, video games. We have not heard you calling our names back to you, but you have not forgotten us. Forgive us, dear Lord. Grant repentance in this city, in the Miami Valley, in this state, O oh Lord. Raise up a family of love that lives before your eyes and that knows you. Lord, We've allowed the world to teach our children as we've invited the liars, the violent, the jealous, the slanderers to parade across our living rooms in living color without restraint. We've been surprised when our children disrespect us and rejected you, but we've led them astray. Forgive us, forgive us, oh God. Lord, many of us, like the city of Dayton, never knew our father. We are people with children, but not knowing what a good, good father is like. Because we haven't known you well. Forgive us. Save us, oh God. Somehow in this, you love us. You love us. You love us well. You've told us that you will be a father to us. Oh, father us. 
great father. We desperately need you in our families. We want to be your family of love. Only you can fix the mess that we've made as we turn to you in repentance. Thank you for allowing us to participate in the divine cleanup. Holy Spirit, guide us. Guide us now into all truth. Connect us, convict us of our sin. Turn us to you, beautiful Savior. Remember our children, the little ones. Father, oh Father, you so love this city that you sent your beloved son to die for our sins. Our wickedness crucified him. Your love, though, it never fails. Our sin is not the conclusion. In Christ, we have hope. We have a future. We have abundant life. Oh, Father, you love this city. This Miami Valley, this state, come to Dayton. We welcome you, Lord. You are the great shepherd. Come. Come, Lord. You are welcome here, we say. Lift your standard of justice and righteousness again in this city, in education, true wisdom and knowledge of God, in media, our city government. Mess us up, O oh God. Wake us up. Teach us, O oh Lord. Write our curriculum. Sing our songs, O oh God. Be our doctor. Show us your beauty. O oh Lord, we declare a raising of true shepherds who know the shepherd all over Dayton, this Miami Valley, up to Toledo, down to Cincinnati, over to Columbus, and up to Cleveland. Jesus is Lord. Give us shepherds after your own heart. We speak your love and kindness over this city now. May your heart, your purposes be established in your people and those who have not met you yet. O oh Lord. Release the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you into, unto our governor, DeWine, unto our city mayor, Whaley, and in every city in Ohio, O oh God. Turn the hearts of the fathers in education, in media, in families, in medicine, in government to the children, Lord. Like you say in Malachi, Lord, turn the students, the children, to the fathers. O oh, Father of fathers, release that three-chord strand, Father, just like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the three generations working, loving, playing, and praying before you, our Lord, our God. We choose you. Allow your glory to shine in this gym city. Drive out the darkness in me, in my family, in our f neighborhoods, Lord, in our neighbors, in our city, Lord. Dayton is your city. Thank you. Thank you, Father for an army of intercessors who will not let you go day and night. We call them to arise now, singing your praises, ravishing your heart, O oh God, worshiping worshipers who know you, O oh God. Raise up the army of evangelists, filling our streets with good news of Jesus, breathing the gospel everywhere. We pray for an army of Issachars who know the times and seasons. Lord, send the apostles and prophets and shepherds to do their part in training and equipping your bride for great exploits, miracles, signs, and wonders. O oh Lord, restore the creativity in Dayton like Bezalel of old with witty inventions, technology, ideas from the culture of heaven to the city of Dayton, O oh God. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All for your glory, mighty God of hosts, Lord of hosts, majestic King, sovereign God, all in Jesus' name we pray. The second of the three God-established institutions is the church. Fitting that today we have churches from all over the greater Dayton area here. Many churches of our area have been the hands and feet of Jesus physically in 2019. Now, this year, 2020, the need is going to be also mental and spiritual. The church can provide hope. Our ultimate hope is not in the government or science, but God. God has called us, his people, regardless of denomination, to be his church, united to proclaim the good news. Now to present scripture and to pray for God's church, Bishop John Jennings. Praise the Lord and God bless you. From the Apostle Paul's epistle to the church of Colossae, Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14 from the King James Version, you'll find these words. Put on therefore 
as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that we as the church and as the body of Christ, we are the elect of God. Father, Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, he said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We thank you that we are holy, that we are your beloved, that we are full of mercy, that we are kind, we are humble, we are meek, and we are long-suffering. We are everything that Christ is. Father, we thank you that with Christ, we are able to forbear and forgive others. Father, we forgive because we are forgiven. Father, we thank you that we have put on charity, which is the bond of spiritual maturity. We release the anointing of this prayer into the atmosphere in Jesus' name, and everyone say amen. God bless you. God has graced and blessed us in America to live in a Christian nation. We enjoy rights and protections unequaled in the world. America's founding form of government and laws, our Declaration of Independence and Bill of Rights, were based on biblical principles and scripture. We should not take it lightly that we can meet safely in a public place on any day to freely pray to our God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. We need to keep this biblical influence in government in these very difficult and changing times. Abraham Lincoln said, the philosophy of the classroom in one generation is the philosophy of the government in the next. To read scripture and then offer a prayer to God for the government is Pastor Pat Murray. It's an honor to be able to pray with so many of you who live in a nation that's called by God to be an answer. His answer is hand extended to the rest of the world. And it is high time for us to begin to shine again in the nations. And so let's pray and believe God that his perfect will will be done in and through the United States of America. Our Father is is extremely um, ready for an awakening and a revival in the land, and it starts with our national government. And so the Bible says in Psalms 33, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people that he has chosen for his inheritance. And then in Deuteronomy chapter number 10, he says, for the Lord is your God, he is the God of gods, the Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality nor takes bribes, that he administers justice for the fatherless and the widow, loves the stranger, giving him food and clothing. And then from the New Testament, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1 says, Therefore I exhort that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men and for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. And so today, as we lift up our voice in prayer, realize today that our God wants to do an amazing work in the nation. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that today we can join our voices together as representatives, not only of the body of Christ, but of the United States of America. And our Father, we pray today in the name of Jesus together in agreement that we are one nation under God. And we pray in Jesus' name today that the, that the leadership of the nation would reflect 
the divine will of God in the earth. And Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, knowing that men and women have been chosen to lead, yet Lord, without your help, are completely incapable of doing the assignment. And so, Father, we pray for the president and the vice president. We pray for President Trump and Vice President Pence to be endued with wisdom from on high. That, Lord, you would open the heavenlies and that you would cause them, Lord, to be able to live within the voice and the clarion voice of God. Surround them with godly wisdom and counsel. In this treacherous time, this time of difficulty and trouble, Lord, I thank you that you're greater, that your voice is louder, Lord, than the trouble. And we pray in Jesus' name that you would give them divine counsel to speak to them the wisdom of God. We pray for the coronavirus task force. We pray that, Heavenly Father, that they would have the wisdom that comes from heaven. And that, Lord Jesus, that today the Congress and the Senate would, would be united instead of divided. We pray, Heavenly Father, that today godly counsel would come and be the, the, the rhythm of the nation again. And in Jesus' name, our Father, we ask that you would expose the enemies of the will of God in the earth, in the, in the government, and Heavenly Father, that you would be exalted in the nation through humble and, and capable leadership. Father, we also pray in the name of Jesus that in the state of Ohio, that there's a release of heaven's wisdom to Governor DeWine and, and uh, Lieutenant Governor Houston. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that there would be, Lord, an awakening strategy to the state of Ohio, whose state motto is, all things are possible to him that believes. And so, Father, we pray now that there would be, Lord, a release of wisdom for the state of Ohio. There's over 10 million people, Lord, that need your help. And so, Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus that there would be a release of divine wisdom to the state of Ohio and to Governor DeWine. We pray your blessing upon him. And we pray, Heavenly Father, today that the, that the Congress and the, the, the Senate, the, the State House, Father God, will be filled with the reassurance that the Lord our God is capable if we'll trust him. Lord, we put it on our money. We pray in Jesus' name it becomes a fact. In God we trust. From every level of every office, of every public seat, Father, we pray wisdom upon our state representatives, our, our congressional representatives to the United States Congress and Senate. We pray divine wisdom upon them. They are our representatives. And so, Father, we pray now in Jesus' name that above all the noise and all the fears that faith would rise in those, Lord God, who, who have the voice and the ear of the country and of the state. That, Lord, that your voice would be clearer and louder than the voice of fear. And in Jesus' name, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so, Father, thank you now for it. We thank you that they have ears to hear. And that, Lord, we'll be doers of the word that we hear and not hearers only. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As was mentioned earlier, God has graced and blessed us in America to live in a Christian nation where we enjoy rights and protections unequaled in the world. And we need to be thankful to God every day for those blessings. It is God's heart to want to bless His people. That thought is reflected in the prayer of Moses as recorded in Numbers chapter 6. And here to sing the blessing is Stefan Stewart.
Thank you, Stefan. We should not treat those blessings lightly. We live in America and know that many have sacrificed much before us to have these blessings. President Reagan said that some people spend an entire lifetime wondering if they made a difference in the world, but the U.S. Armed Forces, they don't have that problem. In our initial prayer gatherings, we prayed specifically for the military. We soon recognized and added to the armed forces all those deemed first responders. Now, in light of the COVID pandemic, we add the frontline responders with our military and first responders deserving our prayers and thanks. They're all trained to be ready and to face difficult and dangerous situations. They need our prayers for protection, both physically and spiritually, for the tasks they face daily. Reading scripture and praying for the protection of our frontline responders is Chaplain Rennes Bowers. There's a spirit of fear sweeping across our world, sweeping across our country, sweeping across our county, across our city, across our neighborhoods. But the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. In 30 years on the Dayton Fire Department, I learned that the opposite of fear is not courage, but faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Our first scripture reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. and Do not fear nor be afraid of them, for the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you, and he will not leave you nor forsake you. And then Jeremiah 33, 3. Call to me and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. And finally, from the New Testament, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you with the frontline workers, the doctors, the nurses, the patient care technicians, the lab workers, the security guards at the hospital, the chefs, the janitorial service, I heard this morning that 32 non-medical personnel in the city of New York have lost their lives to the virus. We pray pray for the patient transporters. We pray for the military warriors, our National Guard, law enforcement, the firefighters, paramedics, EMTs, those from the coroner's office, all the volunteers that are deployed on medical teams across our country. We pray for them and their families for protection. Father, we thank you for those who work diligently for our safety and well-being and for the sacrifices they make for us every single duty shift, for putting their lives on the line. Pour out a blessing upon them and give them favor in the eyes of those they serve. We pray for the spiritual salvation of the frontline workers and a faith in the Lord Jesus to sustain them in the face of danger. Psalm 27, 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Please, Lord, bring your people across the paths of these frontline workers to share the wonderful love of Jesus, that they may be saved and operate in your strength, which never fails. And for those frontline workers who one time followed you but have drifted away, Lord, bring them back through this crisis to a place of vibrant faith, glorious repentance. We pray for their safety and for their protection over them in the face of this plague. The Bible says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Daily, our frontline workers are faced with difficult and complicated decisions. Give them wisdom to choose wisely in every moment of the crisis. Give them humility to cry out to you when they don't know what to do. Help them to experience your presence and to hear your voice when they're overwhelmed. Father, as our frontline responders watch over us and respond to the needs of our country, please keep them ever alert, vigilant, and always ready. Keep them sharp, confident, and prepared in every way. Father, please keep our frontline workers emotionally strong and spiritually tender 
as they're confronted by all the evil and brokenness around them. Protect them from the devastation of PTSD and give them hearts of compassion and kindness in the face of death and hopelessness they encounter on a daily basis. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, enable your followers to draw upon and display the Lord Jesus Christ in every situation. And finally, Heavenly Father, we pray for the families of the frontline workers who experience as much stress and so much fear and uncertainty. Some of these frontline workers have not been able to hug their children for over 30 days. The divorce rate among police and fire is well above the national average. Bring peace to their families and help the family members to keep their eyes fixed on you. Draw the families into a relationship with yourself to find help in their time of trouble. And Lord, your word says, and I close with this, Psalm 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And then verse 10, and there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall plague come nigh thy dwelling. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask all of this. Amen. I've been told that the best-selling book in colonial America was the New England Primer, the textbook most used in the schools and by parents in their homes. It was full of biblical principles and scripture learning, which were the main sources of education in early America. The landscape of all learning has changed quickly in the past two months. Students, parents, and all levels of education are facing new challenges, but also opportunities. How much better for all would it be if a reverence for scriptural tenets would permeate America's classrooms at all levels of education, right in the homes right now? To read scripture and pray for our students, teachers, and administrators at all levels of education, Pastor Norman Scarce. I need the old we need thee every hour. We need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I, I come to to the yes 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 For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Eternal God, our Father, first and foremost, we say thank you. Because of your infinite wisdom, O oh God, you have saw fit to turn the hearts of your people back to you. God, today we're praying for education, and I specifically say thank you, O oh God, because when we took prayers out the school, you just said, I'll take the school. And you have allowed us to put prayer in our homes again because of it. And we say thank you for it. God, we ask you now to bless every teacher, every principal, every administrator, every school board member who is trying to figure out what to do next. 
God, help us to also remember Psalm 46, that you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And God, we just say thank you for not only being omnipresent, but very present. God, because we understand that your omnipresence says I'm everywhere at the same time, but your very presence says I'm every time at the same where. So God, we just say thank you. We say thank you, oh God, for allowing us in education to pivot, not necessarily to change, but to refocus. God, making us stronger, making us better. And God, I just say thank you because after all of this is over, we're going to be left with some things that we should have been doing anyway. So God, bless every home. Bless every parent, oh God that is struggling to make sure that their child stays educated and engaged. That parent that still has to work, that parent that's working from home, sharing a computer with their children, oh God, bless them and give them what they need to make this happen. God, we'll be ever so careful to give your name praise. Thank you, Jesus, to give your name praise and glory because you are worthy of it. Now unto him who was able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy to the only wise God, our Savior. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. God, we will follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Amen. The Dayton Miami Valley region has been blessed and is recognized as a wellspring of innovation and the birthplace of many inventions and inventors. Our businesses are the fuel, the funding source for all other sectors of society. Righteousness in business would greatly benefit business owners and workers and would also lay the foundation for righteousness to grow in the other spheres of society. Many businesses have been severely impacted by the operating restrictions brought on by the pandemic, we need to have God's mercy and wisdom present as businesses reopen and operate in a new normal. We need God's wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and revelation. And now to present scripture and pray for those in the business sphere is Daria Dillard Stone. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to be here. The first assignment God has given us, even though we're socially distancing from each other, was to come here and declare war on the enemy, first of all, and take back everything that he's tried to steal, especially through this pandemic. So as we pray, there are some scriptures that I want us to keep in mind. Dealing with the business. In Isaiah 48, 17, it states thusly, Thus says the Lord, you Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. And then in Proverbs 16, verses 8 and 9, it reads, Better a little with righteousness than much gain with injustice. In their hearts, humans plan their course but the Lord establishes their steps. And then from the Gospel of Matthew, it states in Matthew 7, 17 and 18, even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. As we open up our businesses again, as we begin to use our, our new normal, it's going to take prayer. So I ask now that you pray with me fervently, expecting a miracle. Heavenly Father, we come to you today as humble as we know how. First of all, to say thank you for waking us up this morning. You didn't have to do it, but you did. Now, Lord, as it refers to your business, as every business that is open, you've given the man the mind to be in retail, to be in social services, to be in whatever profession that they have to gain profit and bear fruit from. But Lord, you know, before the pandemic, 
there was some already bad fruit that was being sold to people because of price gouging. Lord, when we open up again, when you allow us to realize that if it had not been for you on our side, we wouldn't have no business because all business is your business. So Lord, you tell us to acknowledge you in all our ways and you will direct our path. Lord, we need you. We need you to get into that leader, that CEO, that bank president, and no longer let them look at greed and put profit before people. Lord, we need you to change the hearts of the chairmen of the board, change the hearts of the professors, the bank presidents, the CEO, COOs of every company. Lord, even down to the retail stores and the fast food chains, you give us all the glory to do things the right way. But Lord, we have not. We are guilty of cheating people. We're guilty, Lord, of not paying a man what he's due when he works for us. We have not treated our workers well, Lord. And we ask you right now to fix us, to clean us up, Lord. Every business in the Dayton area, in Ohio, in the region, in the world, I ask you right now in a special way, as I stand in agreement with my brothers and sisters, to cover us. Lord, the economy is in a bad way. We are in negative. But we know that with you, all things are possible and you can turn things around. You got our attentions, Lord. You've leveled the playing field. Lord, there may even be someone, especially when it relates to our small businesses, that have just went out of business. But don't let them give up on you. They might give up on themselves. But Lord, if they come to you humbly and ask you to open up doors, you can do that. So Lord, don't just make us have business as usual. Let us do things with a new season. Let the shift that you're allowing to come in and overflow and overtake us, Lord. And our spiritual man has to stand up and fight for what's right. And we have to start giving you what's due you. I pray for every business, Lord. Even the business man or woman who doesn't believe in you. They may be an atheist. They don't think they even need you, Lord. But right now, even in their ignorance, Lord, you give them breath. You give them intellect. Whether we acknowledge you or not, you will be acknowledged. So, Lord, have your way in every business in this world. And, Lord, establish it so that it stands on your principles, that it stands for what's right and not what's wrong, that it's not always about making money as much as it is about making good people do great work. We need you, Lord. We can't get along without you. We thank you most of all for Jesus, and it's in Jesus' name that I pray with power. It's in Jesus' name that I pray with purpose, and it's in Jesus' name, Lord, that we pray, standing on every promise in your word. Amen, amen, and amen again. Through the mind and senses enter all the ideas and memories we have. Today's advanced and ever-changing communication technology is influencing large multitudes. It has the ability to positively or negatively affect whole peoples and cultures fast and at times without checks and balances. The media, the arts, and entertainment can filter or magnify values and virtues. It can celebrate or distort values and virtues. Our prayer is that God be present and also be glorified through the arts, media, and entertainment. To read scripture and pray for those in media, arts, and entertainment, Pastor Francisco Jimenez. God says in his word that death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will yield its fruits. He also says about our motivations to accomplish what we desire that where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above, from God, is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And the Apostle Paul said to a young preacher named Titus that God's grace appears to all men 
teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So let's pray together. Father, we come to you today in humility, reverence, and worship. The fact that you are our good, good Father moves our hearts and drives them to your heart to find grace, mercy, and guidance in this time of need. Lord, thank you for making us born into your family by the power of the gospel, by grace alone, in faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone. We praise you for who you are and for inviting us this morning to your throne of grace in prayer. Father, we know that the self-righteous man and the proud won't stand before your presence, but the humble is the one who reaches your heart because of your compassion, love, and mercy. So, Father, when it comes to talk with you about the role that the media, arts, entertainment play in our society, we have mixed emotions. Our heart is moved to ask you to intervene as you extend to us your creativity, wisdom, but also your forgiveness, grace, and mercy. Father, we acknowledge that you are our creator, and every skill or talent we have is a reflection of who you are. The creativity and intelligence displayed on these fields point to you because we are created in your image. So we praise you for blessing us with talents to create songs, words, technology, devices, pictures, melodies, news, movies, books, stories, and thousands and thousands of resources. But Father, we are also responsible for not using those talents and resources for your glory and for the good of your creation. Father, please forgive us for forgetting that we are stewards and not owners. Please forgive us when our media uses words to destroy and not to edify. Please, Father, give us the gift of repentance for manipulating the news for our own benefit, despising what is truthful and right. Soften our hearts and make us sensitive to the bad use of technology, book, movies, and music. Awake our spirits to see the danger and to reject the lies that are spread every day about you, about our identity, marriages, families, and purpose in life. Fill our lives with a new and fresh touch of your grace, O oh Lord, to make us reject what is ungodly and destructive for our families and souls. Fill our hearts with the knowledge of your glory in order to prefer and choose what is good and pure and according to your will. Call and arise artists, professionals, inventors, influencers, filled with intelligence and with your Holy Spirit to display your glory more and more on these areas. Thank you. Thank you for the many tools, apps, and resources that honor your name and spread the good news of the gospel. Use the new generations to steal from the devil the bad use of technology and use it for your glory for bringing revival to the world. Father, we long to see a new global spiritual awakening in our lifetime. Align our hearts with your heart during this global pandemic. Don't allow us to miss your agenda by being so caught up in our own agendas. Help your church, our leaders, and authorities to be aware of it and to walk with you during this process. Father, we trust you. We place every prayer, tear, and desire in your heart, in the precious name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Our time of corporate prayer is over, and let's remember again how blessed we are in America and ask God to continue to be with us as we face the future. And now to sing America the Beautiful is Stefan Stewart.
Well, we thank all of our participants today. You know, the privilege of prayer is open. It never was closed in the first place. The Miami Valley City Gates Ministry especially wants to thank the Dayton Living Word Church, Pat Murray, the pastor, their technical staff for the use of their facilities and time, and their expertise and equipment to make this possible for you to watch on the internet. Thanks also to the Declare Worship community for their encouragement knowledge and hosting of the program on their many internet platforms. And thank you for taking time today to connect with us on the internet for the 2020 National Day of Prayer. We've had to practice social distance. We need to practice closeness with God. And now we conclude with closing comments from Pastor Robert Jackson, chairman of our sponsoring organization, the Miami Valley City Gates Ministry, and then Pastor Dan Brown closing the ceremony with a benediction. God bless you. Thank you so much. We want to just say to our community and to all our participants, you have blessed our souls today. And we ask that you will continue to go forward praising and lifting up the name of Jesus. And this event, we want to thank Pastor Pat Murray and all of the staff that's here the living word that has opened their doors and made this the, the monumental event that it is. We want to say thank you. And at this time now, I'm going to turn this over to my, to my brother. I, I don't know whether y'all can tell the family resemblance or not, but I want to turn it over to him and he's going to have some remarks and then he's going to close us out with prayer and the benediction. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Brother Jackson, my dear brother, it won't always be like this. Amen. He will perfect that which concerns us. Sooner or later, it's going to turn in our favor. Amen. He is turning it around yes. for me for you, for us. He's about his business in the world and in our city and in our life. He's turning it around for good and his glory. Pray with me. Lord, you've always looked for men and women who would stand in the gap in Abraham's day, could there have been 10 to save those twin cities? In the days of the judges, could there have been those that were not just looking and doing what they thought were right in their own eyes? And in the days of Ezekiel, when he said you looked for a man, you looked for someone to stand in the gap, to make up the hedge. Oh God, today we have stood in the gap 
men and women have joined hearts together for our city, for our country, for our world. And so God, we ask, Lord, that you would take the humble efforts, God, that have been prayed today, God, for the scriptures that have been lifted up today, would you, God, take that, Lord, God, that we have stood in the gap for our people, for our world, for our nation, for our time. Would you turn it around, God, for good? And Father, may you get glory and may you be honored, God, in all of this, Lord. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, we ask this today and commit this, Lord, as we have stood together in the gap for our world at this moment. And we pray, amen, and amen, and amen. God bless you.